Russia panics as the United States Air Force tests a new Super A-10 Warthog. The first images of an A-10C Thunderbolt II, armed with GBU-39 small diameter bombs during a test near Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, were released by the U.S. Air Force on March 25th. The service did not disclose much info, except for mentioning that the test flight was performed by the 40th Flight Test Squadron on February 9th, 2022. Want to know the various other upgrades added to the famous A-10 Warthog? then stick around till the end of the video. The U.S. Air Force was on the verge of retiring its entire fleet of A-10 Thunderbolt IIs, also known as Warthogs, just eight years ago. General Mark Welsh III, the then U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff, stated in 2014 that the Air Force needed to retire the A-10 fully if it was to make significant budget cutbacks and that it required freed up funding and manpower to be channeled into the standup of new F-35 units. Welsh argued that selling the close air support mainstay will save $3.7 billion over the next five years of the defense budget, plus another $500 million in unnecessary modifications. But by 2022, the A-10 is not only still in service, but it's also undergoing dozens of new improvements to keep it relevant for years to come. New weapons, a redesigned cockpit, and a rethinking of tactics are just a few of the things in the works to keep the hog's tusks sharp and its community a valuable contributor on the front lines. The A-10 was designed to destroy Soviet tanks on the plains of Northern Europe, and it was based on the General Electric GAU 8A Avenger 30mm gun and its seven barrels, which can inflict severe damage on armor. The Warthog's 11 hardpoints have changed over time, from carrying dumb iron bombs and rockets to carrying the most advanced guided weaponry. Despite earning a fearsome reputation during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and evolving with the times as new technology became available, the legendary ground attack fighter has been repeatedly targeted by Air Force cuts. The U.S. Air Force argued that the F-35A Lightning II could take over the A-10's missions, pointing out that the Warthog was no longer capable of surviving in modern high-threat settings with powerful air defense systems. The A-10 community was told that the protracted battle in Afghanistan was over and that CAS specialists were no longer required. Meanwhile, A-10 advocates in Congress angrily opposed the ideas, claiming that they would jeopardize the USAF's ability to cover this task, and some even wanted a fly-off to demonstrate that the F-35 could adequately replace the A-10. The decision to retire the A-10 had sparked a chain reaction in terms of support and upgrades. The 472nd Test and Evaluation Squadron TES, at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, and the A-10 Program Office at Hill Air Force Base, Utah, had effectively shut down operational testing for the active duty A-10 fleet. However, with OIR at its height, by the summer of 2016, this was all being reversed, with a renewed impetus for mission-critical enhancements for the A-10. The projected end of the A-10 slowed some supply chains for a while, but a series of upgrades quickly got them back on track. In 2017, the Lightweight Airborne Recovery Systems LARS, V-12, was installed on all active duty Air National Guard and Reserve Command A-10s to allow pilots to communicate more effectively with individuals on the ground, such as downed pilots and pararescuemen. This was implemented into Operational Flight Program OFP Suite 8, and all A-10s now have this technology integrated into the Central Interface Control Unit to give essential combat search and rescue CSAR, information. The active duty test effort under the 422nd and 59th Test and Evaluation Squadrons, as well as the Air National Guard Air Force Reserve Command Test Center, AATC, at Tucson Air National Guard Base, Arizona, now work together as a community with limited funds. The U.S. Air Force now has 281 A-10s, but there have been numerous failed attempts to reduce the fleet. Because of the A-10s revival, a new common fleet initiative is being developed to keep the plane in service and credible until 2035. The requirement to be able to survive in a disputed environment lies at the heart of the A-10's modifications. This entails Warthog pilots escaping threats by employing new standoff weapons with longer ranges, as well as revised tactics. 
The A-10's operations will expand to incorporate the ability to deal with some threats using precise weapons at long ranges. Once these threats are eliminated, the A-10 should be able to return to more traditional missions. There are also ongoing efforts to improve the A-10's capacity to operate in remote locations with very little support. All of these will boost mission readiness and capability by improving tactics. Suite 9, launched in 2019, included Situational Awareness Position, SAP, into the OFP, allowing forward air controllers to digitally transmit their position. The aircraft can now send weapons to several targets with a single button press on a single pass, whereas before, it took a lot of pilot workload. Pilots of the A-10 can now use 500-pound class GBU-38 or 54 Joint Direct Attack Munitions, JDAM, or 2,000-pound class GBU-31 Joint Direct Attack Munitions. And the aircraft will also tell the pilot whether they can all hit their targets in a single run. Hobbit, hybrid optical-based inertial tracker, a development of the Thales Visionic Scorpion helmet that A-10 pilots have been wearing since 2013, was also included in Suite 9. Also, the improved helmet more accurately tracks pilot head movements via a new optical head tracker, consisting of a series of dots on the canopy. Air Force Major Matthew Kading said that the Air Force is currently working on the HRDS, which is an 11.6-inch, 1920x1080 pixel multifunction color display that replaces the cockpit's central six-pack of analog instruments with a digital primary flight display. A new map engine will be displayed alongside high-definition targeting pod footage. It is the most important cockpit upgrade since the transfer of the A-10A to the A-10C. This improvement is especially significant since it gives modern navigation instruments enhanced situational awareness when flying in instrument meteorological conditions, according to him. It will make targets much more obvious by displaying targeting pod film in higher resolution, and improved map imagery will allow for better target correlation. Before we conclude, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. One of the most important modifications announced in 2019 as part of the A-10 Common Fleet Initiative is the integration of the GBU-39 aboard the Warthog, as the A-10 is popularly known by its pilot. The program's purpose is to keep the A-10C in the U.S. Air Force inventory into the late 2030s, while also ensuring that it remains a credible and lethal threat in that time frame, should the necessity to deploy it during a high-end conflict occur. Until now, the A-10 could only carry one weapon on each pylon, but with the BRU-61A rack, the A-10 will be able to carry four SDBs on each weapon pylon, transforming it into a bomb truck capable of neutralizing threats up to 50 miles away before beginning to provide close air support CAS, to ground troops. The integration of the GBU-39 on the A-10 has been in the works at least since 2020, when the Warzone reported that SDB testing was in developmental testing with the 40th Flight Test Squadron Detachment 1 based at davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona. The GBU-39 was first installed on the F-15E Strike Eagle in 2006 and is now installed on the F-16, F-22, AC-130, Gripen, and Tornado, as well as the F-35, B-1, B-2, and B-52. The SDB is a small 250-pound multipurpose insensitive penetrating bomb with a blast fragmentation warhead for stationary targets. It has deployable wings that open upon release, allowing the GPS-guided bomb to glide for several miles before hitting the target with pinpoint accuracy. When launched at high speed from a high altitude, it can travel up to 50 miles, keeping the attack plane out of range of most SAM, surface-to-air missile, batteries. Do you think the USAF should continue upgrading the A-10 Warthog and keep it in service? Let us know in the comment section. Also, check out our video on USAF has finally revealed its 6th generation fighter.